Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ableton Certified DubSpot Los Angeles instructor, Thavius Beck, broadcasting live from DubSpot LA. In today's tutorial video, I'd like to talk about my own personal technique for warping acapellas. I know many people out there are interested in doing remixes, and one of the hardest things to do can be to properly warp an acapella so that it plays in sync with whatever content you're producing. So I'll show you my own personal technique, and hopefully it'll help you all out. So let's check it out. In this tutorial video, I want to talk about something that I know gives a lot of Ableton Live users some problems, and that is, how do you properly warp an acapella? Warping acapellas is actually not that difficult of a thing to do if you just have a good plan before you start to attack warping the acapella. Warping something that has rhythmic content, you know, such as like some very obvious drums or bass line or something, is relatively easy because you can sort of visually see where the beat lines up against your beat grid. With acapellas, it can be a little bit harder. So what I did is I chose, uh, I actually went online and uh, finding acapellas is relatively easy. A simple Google search for acapellas will bring up a ton of different websites, some more reputable than others. Uh, you can find acapellas on Beatport, but you know, they're kind of pricey. Uh, I actually got this acapella from a website called djservicepack.com and they have some free acapellas you can download. If you sign up for their service, then you know you can get a ton more. Uh, but anyway, I found an acapella from an artist that I've never heard of before, uh, Ellie Goulding, I believe is how you say her last name. And the song is called Lights. She's a British singer-songwriter. Uh, she has a very nice voice. Uh, but like I said, I've never heard this song before. So uh, I thought it'd be a good challenge because this whole process will be very organic. And you'll see that it's not that difficult to do if you just have the proper approach. So with all that said, uh, there's one thing that I want to make sure all of you do before you try to do this. If we go into our preferences, in the record warp launch tab in the preferences, there's an option that says auto warp long samples. And I'd like all of you to turn that off before you try uh, doing what I'm about to show you. The main reason why is because if you have auto warp long samples on, every time you import a relatively long audio sample, live will automatically enable warp and then populate your clip with a bunch of warp markers that you're not gonna need. The reason you won't need multiple warp markers is because if you're dealing with something that doesn't have any tempo changes and you're not trying to change the tempo, then you only need one warp marker. Your warp marker establishes the tempo of the entire audio clip. And if there's no tempo change, then we don't need more than one warp marker, okay? So, auto warp long samples is off in our preferences. I have my acapella here. Ideally, I'd like to be able to warp this so it can play on top of this little loop, but we'll get there later, all right? For now, let me go ahead and solo the, uh, the vocal clip here. I'm gonna enable warp, and right now, enabling warp, all it did is just uh, placed this acapella against our beat grid. The tempo, it assigned it, 168 BPM. That's still the tempo of our project, so this is not gonna be sped up or slowed down. Uh, this just allows me to basically jump ahead in the clip, okay? You see my speaker icon there. I can start playing this from wherever I want now. So let's play it from about right here. I think this is the verse part. This is probably the hook. Uh, so let's play it and just get an idea of what we're uh, working with. I had a way then Losing it all on my own I had a heart then But the queen has been overthrown And I'm not sleeping now The dark is too hard to be Okay, now listening to the verse it's not really that obvious what the rhythm is. Although I can already get a sense of it, I'm not really hearing a word that falls like right at the beginning of a bar. And ideally that's what I'm looking for. The first thing that I would do is try to find a word that I know lands on the one of a bar. And then that way I can basically right click on that word, go to set 1.1.1 here. Every time I start that clip, it'll start on that word. That word is on the beginning of a bar and that gives me a, a reference point where I can start stretching the rest of the acapella to fit properly against the beat grid. Okay, now the thing is, is that in the verse part, like I said, I'm not really hearing anything that lands on the one, but I'm pretty certain if we go to the hook, again, this is pretty obviously the hook. If we look at this, most pop vocals are arranged where you have, you know, a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, maybe like a bridge and then a chorus. So the chorus is usually gonna have the most rhythmic and catchy sort of uh, rhythm, okay? <laughs> the most rhythmic rhythm. It'll have the most catchy and kind of steady rhythm against the beat. Uh, so usually the hook is the best place to try to find a word that lands on the one and start with, you know, your warping process. So let's go ahead and play it from the hook and try to find a word that seems like it's landing on the beginning of a bar. You show the lights that stop me Turn to stone You shine it when I'm alone 
And so I tell myself that I'll be strong Dreaming when they're gone Cause they're gone Okay, so listening to that hook, I can definitely feel the rhythm of it, okay? If I listen to this and I play it from here, let's play it a little bit earlier, okay? And I'm just gonna count along with it to, so you guys can kind of hear the beat, the basic metronome in my head as I'm playing this. To push me, you show the lights One, that two, stop three, me. Four, Turn two, to stone, on your shining three, two, when three, I'm four, alone. Four, two, three, and so four, I tell eight. my. Okay, so I think the word lights at the beginning here of the hook. You show the lights that. I think that word is landing on the beginning of a bar. So that's the first thing we'll do is establish the word that starts on the one. You show the lights that. Okay, and. It looks like it's right here. You show the lights, that's... All right, there's the lights, right? And let me see, I wanna make sure... I'm gonna right click right here, and I'm gonna go to set 1.1.1 here. Now I have a feeling that this isn't really the beginning of the word, because that L, the lights, uh, that L is kinda long, and I think that's probably more here. And there's a transient marker at the end of the word, because the T, that t the T and the S at the end of the lights, that's probably where this transient marker was placed, okay? We'll have a better idea after we set the one here, all right? So I wanna set the one where that word is at that sounds like it's landing on the beginning of a bar. That's step one. All right, let's play it from here and make sure we have all of the word lights. Lights that, lights that stop me. Okay, not quite. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to uh, basically move the audio clip in relation to the warp marker. And I can do that by going up to the warp marker here if I hold shift, while holding shift, if I click and hold on the warp marker, I can actually move the audio like so. Okay, there we go. Lights that, lights that stop me, turn. Lights that stop me, turn to. Lights, lights, lights that stop me, turn to stop. Right. Now, you might notice I don't have the metronome on. And the reason why is because I know that the tempo of my project is nowhere near the tempo of this acapella. Quite honestly, at this point, turning the metronome on will probably do more harm than good. It'll just confuse me. And I already have a visual metronome in front of me. My beat grid is on. I can see the beats here. That's the second beat of the first bar, the third beat of the first bar, the fourth beat of the first bar, and then the first beat of the second bar. So what I'd like to do now is basically figure out what should go in the first two bars of this uh, hook, okay? I've established this word starts at the beginning of the first bar. So I wanna find the first two bars of the hook, all right? And I basically wanna properly stretch that against my beat grid. So what I'm looking for now is the word that should start at the beginning of bar three, okay? So let's listen to the hook and let's try to figure out what word would start at the beginning of bar three. Okay, so the word short, I think, should be at the beginning of bar three. And again, all I'm doing right now, I found a word that starts on the beginning of the first beat. Okay, well, found a word that starts at the beginning of a bar, and I'm using that as my reference point. So now I can count from there however many beats, and now that I've determined this word, where to go? Short, I think it is. Lights that stop me, turn to star on your shine. Okay, the word short right here. This sounds like it would be the beginning, the first word of bar three. So I'm gonna grab this transient marker. And again, I'm not gonna make another warp marker. I'm gonna simply click and slide this over. So now that lands at the beginning of bar three, okay? So at this point, I should have properly warped the first two bars here so that they're on beat. Now, the thing is, before I play this back, I just wanna show you guys something uh, that's really good to be aware of, all right? As I move the audio, the segment BPM changes, okay? Now, it does that to give us an idea of what the original tempo uh, Ableton Live thinks uh, is the original tempo of this audio clip. Now that it's been warped like this, we move things around, Live is guessing that the original tempo of this clip is 119.69, okay? That's significant because if Live thinks it's this tempo and our project is at 168, it's gonna play this clip at a much faster tempo than uh, we originally heard it. And it's gonna sound a little strange. So let's turn the metronome on and let's just see if uh, we have the first two bars on beat. All right, now 
I eventually want this acapella to be at 168 BPM, but it's a little fast right now. Just in terms of warping, it'll be easier if I can play it back a little bit more slowly. So I'm gonna slow my project tempo down, keeping in mind that I'm gonna speed it back up later, all right? Okay, so the first two bars seem like they're on beat now. Lights that stop me turn to stone, you shine it when I'm alone. Now again, I'm not gonna use more than one warp marker because this acapella should only have one steady tempo. So I've established where the one is at, okay, where the beginning of a bar is at, and now all I'm gonna do is just use the transient markers to stretch the audio, uh, which will then, in effect, move the entire audio clip, okay? It'll stretch the entire clip, and like I said, all I'm trying to do is just stretch it so that the timing uh, is consistent against my beat grid. So far, the first two bars are pretty good. So let's keep going and see if this starts to drift. Okay, but this is, <laughs> surprisingly, this has worked really, really well right off the bat. Normally it takes a little bit more massaging uh, to get this properly on beat. But one thing I'm noticing, it does seem like it's starting to drift a bit. It seems like it's a little bit too fast. And I've determined that because the hook is still going, and right here, she's repeating the first part, where she says the lights. And it all seems like it's a little bit early. And if I zoom in here, this transient is right on the word lights. And as we know from the first part of the hook, the word lights should be at the beginning of a bar. So I'm gonna grab this transient marker and I'm gonna click and slide that to the beginning of bar 13. Now by doing that, again, it's corrected the timing of the entire clip. So it only barely started drifting here, so it's not really gonna affect the timing that significantly here, okay? But what it will do is basically help me prevent the audio from drifting later down the line. So let's play it from the beginning and then we'll kind of skip ahead and then we'll see if the audio is starting to drift, okay? Another important thing I want you guys to note Shifting that little transient there for the word lights, now it's saying the tempo was 119.83. We're getting closer to 120 BPM. 120 might be the actual original tempo of this clip, okay? As we do more adjustments, we'll keep an eye on that. So let's start from the beginning. Lights that stop me, turn to stone, you shine it when I'm alone. And so I call it, call it, call it, me home, call it, call it, call it, home. You show the lights that stop me, turn to stone, you shine it when I'm alone. I play within my head, touch my own skin. All right, so now the phrasing of the verse makes a bit more sense, okay? The metronome's on, we got the hook properly warped, so this seems like it's making a lot more sense. I don't really notice it drifting just yet, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start to skip further ahead. Okay, and now, again, going back to the hook, the word lights, that's been our point of reference this whole time. So I know the word lights should start on the one, and here it's not, it's a little bit early. This transient marker is at the beginning of the word lights. You show the lights that All right, so what I want to do is grab this transient marker and nudge it over so that it snaps right on the beginning of bar 33. So again, now, if it felt like it was starting to slightly drift earlier, all that should be corrected, okay? The timing up to this point should be good. And if we look here, what does it say? The tempo was 119.98. Now, if you get to a point where you've warped an acapella and the everything sounds really good, it's pretty solid, and the tempo you get is like 119.98 or 0.99 or 0.49 or something, at that point, you can generally just round up. People rarely produce things at 119.99 BPM. Usually it's gonna be either a whole number or something 0.5, okay? Uh, that's not always the case, but that's a general rule that usually works. I've done this a lot. <laughs> it, it holds up quite a bit. So uh, at this point, I think we're generally good, but I wanna make sure, so I'm just gonna skip ahead from the hook here. Save. You show the lights that stop me, turn to stone. You calling, calling, calling me home, calling, calling, calling home. You show the lights.
You show the lights, 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 Okay, so I think we're in pretty good shape. I see her at the very end of the song. This is probably her saying lights again. It's a little bit early, just a little bit. And I'm guessing that if I nudge this transient marker over to bar uh, 96. Lights that stop me. All right, so I think now. Lights that stop me. Turn lights, lights. To save. You show the love be strong. strong go stand. Okay, so now I think we're pretty good. The, the last thing we need to do here is I'm going to just take my start point and I'm going to move this back to what I think is the beginning of the tune. Now, let's see. We're going to cut off the first word by doing that. So I'm going to give her a, a four bar lead in. Okay. So this is bar negative 16. So we're going to go back four more bars. One, two, three, four. So she have a four bar lead in before the verse starts. And now this is all on beat. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and change the warp mode to complex pro because complex pro is the best warp mode for dealing with acapellas uh, in my experience. And now I could bring my tempo back up to 168, which is going to sound cartoonishly fast. Uh, but then I could try to place this against the little beat that I have. Let's go ahead and just play it from here. I totally didn't realize those were going to be in tune with each other. That was pretty awesome. Uh, happy accidents abound. So anyway, there you go. That is my personal technique for warping acapellas. Essentially, you just find a rhythmic reference, a word that lands on the one of a bar. You set your one there. Okay, we did that by finding that word lights. We uh, right-clicked above the, the word lights. We set our one there. That moved our warp marker. And then from there, we tried to get the first couple bars on beat, listen to the rhythm of the acapella, uh, try to match the rhythm of the acapella against your beat grid, move certain words where they should fall. Essentially, just look for words that start on the beginning of a bar. And starting with a hook is a really good way to ensure success. And as we zoom out, one warp marker, perfectly warped acapella, ready for remixing. So hopefully that technique is helpful and uh, enlightening for you and uh, will help you produce a lot of good remixes in the future. With that said, my name is Thavius Beck, Ableton Certified DubSpot Los Angeles Instructor, signing off. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.